Welcome back to House Rich, the world's best real estate show. So today we're going to talk about how to go from zero to 12 doors in 12 months. Let's go. I did the let's go thing as if I was going to cut to another clip or something like that. So not that fancy yet. So first, let's talk about our sponsor for today's show. It is Coins and Culture at Instagram.com or at, on Instagram. So it is Coins, the word in the the word or the letter in so it's going to the letter in the world culture on uh, ig you got some got some dope short uh short term or short form clips on there so i know the owner he's a pretty he's a pretty cool guy so um yeah zero to 12 doors in 12 months it's based on the fha guidelines and so if you're on the channel hit the subscribe and all that yada 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 share with a friend so let's talk about fha loans and what the guidelines are so with an FHA loan, the big benefit is it's more credit forgiving than like a conventional loan. And if you're looking to house hack, you know, and get a multifamily property, you can you go three and a half percent down, whether it's a one, two, three, or four unit property. So four units is the highest amount of units you can go for a residential loan. Anything above that, we go into the commercial space, and it's a whole different type of loan. And so if you're looking to purchase a multifamily property, with like a conventional loan or something like that, the guidelines are you have to put you have to put down more. I think it like like with a duplex, the smallest I've seen is is five percent. If you're looking at like a three or four, you can be putting down between twenty and twenty five percent, even if you're living in the property. So if you're going to be using it as a primary residence, you might as well go with a FHA loan. And once again, with the FHA loan, you want to use it for a year, and if you can just just um, refinance it into a conventional. You don't need to have 20% down on FHA loan to refinance it in a conventional, contrary to popular belief. You can refinance it into a conventional um, and just be in a position to drop the mortgage insurance later on. All right. So what you want to do is, and please do not get married to run this play, but what you want to do is you want to purchase a multi-unit family property yourself, you as a single man, because with an FHA loan, Excuse me. With an FHA loan, it's only for a primary resident. So if you're married to someone, you both can't. The FHA is gonna be like, hey, these two people aren't living, can't be living in primary residence themselves because they're they're married. So if you're married to someone, or excuse me, if you're in a good solid relationship with somebody, you purchase one multi-unit property and you declare that your primary residence. So you buy that four unit property. You live there. Have your fiance or bride to be or whoever buy that uh, four unit property, you know, his or herself as well. And so together you two have four doors. You have four doors. They're both your own primary residence. You live in one unit, you live in one um, building. She lives in the other building. So you have four units as a couple. And so there's two benefits to that. Is one, you probably could go a little bit lower price bracket wise than you normally would because hey, you're using your salary to live off of this one property and, and um, maintain the income and meet the FHA self-sufficiency test. And she's using her income and her uh, all that good stuff to um, sustain this other property and to to uh, pass the FHA self-sufficiency test as well. So what's the FHA self-sufficiency test? What it says is basically is that the mortgage can be no more than 75% of the rent. So uh, if you're, you have a four unit property and that's for three and four unit property only this applies to. So if you have a four unit property, they all rent for a thousand dollars. Your total rent for that uh, complex is $4,000. So the mortgage can no, be no higher than Let's see if you can do the math yourself. I'll give you a couple seconds. Three, two, one. $3,000. So no matter how much you make, your um, mortgage payment cannot be more than $3,000 in order to pass the FHA self-sufficiency test. And so the reason for that is the property has to be self-sustaining. Hence the word self-sufficiency. So like if a person moves out the property and they can no longer pay rent, you have to be able to still sustain the property. If you lose your job or something, you have to be able to still sustain the property based on the rent covered from the other three units. So that's the guideline. It has nothing to do with the income. You can make um, somehow a million dollars if you want to be using the FHA loan. And it doesn't matter. So the debt to income ratio doesn't matter at all. So 
So you have to be in a property 12 months per the FHA guidelines. And then at the end of that 12 months, you want to get married. And the reason you want to get married is because you love each other. But outside of that is you want to be showing that you're upgrading your living standards. Because a lot of folks will tell you that you only have one FHA loan at a time. That's actually not true. There's certain exceptions to having more than one FHA loan at a time. One of those exceptions is that you're upgrading your living standards for a specific reason. One of those reasons could be that you're married. So now that your family size has gone from a family of one to a family of two, maybe your um, significant other has um, offspring or, or I guess children is what we call them. Um, and you know, you're going from a one person house to a three person house. So now you need a, a different, a bigger place essentially, or, or a better place. So you still can't be, you still can't be going to like, uh, there has to be some sort of change in the living condition. So like, you know, maybe a bigger, um, four unit, you know, maybe a four unit with more rooms and stuff like that. You have to be showing that you're upgrading your living standards too. But the way to be, still have an FHA or have multiple FHA loans is a marriage is one of those loopholes. So, uh, if you wanted me to do a video on the other loopholes, uh, comment below, or if you listen on the podcast, let me know. Um, and I'll do another video on that. So yeah, that, that's kind of the, essentially the loophole as far as the, um, running the play as far as zero to 12 months. And so, the big thing is this is just, it, no one's saying run this play in 12 months. I mean, I don't know a single person that has actually done this in 12 months. The biggest thing is the theory, the concept behind it. And so it's about properly building your real estate portfolio. That's really the theory and the concept behind this loan. It's not run this ridiculous play in 12 months. You want to do things on your schedule. You don't have to do a four unit. You can do a three unit, two, three units. You can do two duplexes. It's just the theory behind this loan, which, I, which is what I want you all to pay attention to. It's about building your the proper real estate portfolio. So I'll do a quick preview. There's another video I'm going to do, but it's basically the four, three, two, one method. So it goes, to, it talks about um, just doing this yourself, going from a fourplex to a triplex to a duplex to a, to eventually your dream home and, and why that's the proper way to do it. But it has to go with basically upgrading your living condition. So yeah, that that's the play. Um, that That's really it. So um, these videos have to be 10 minutes on YouTube for me to get some some credit for it. So if that's all you wanted to hear, um, that's the play. You can kind of you can kind of uh, tap out now, whether it's the podcast or YouTube. But I'm just going to talk about some other FHA um, guidelines as well, and so reasons reasons folks do or do not like the FHA loan. So as I mentioned before, really, unless you're house hacking, there's no real reason to ever, or or you have, or you have, or you have bad credit and you can't qualify for a conventional loan. There's really no reason to ever use an FHA loan. So, you know, folks don't like the FHA loan as far as sellers for various reasons. One is because it's more credit forgiving. So whether you want to admit it, admit it or not, if you have a low credit score, you're just you're you're um, you're probably less financially responsible to somebody with a higher credit score. Probably, obviously not everybody, but probably that's the case in your scenario. And whether that's your case or not, that's the stigma attached to it, which means that the seller probably thinks you're li you're less likely to close the loan um, based on somebody with the exact same criteria. Two is there's like the FHA um, addendum, and that's on the VA loan as well. Basically, it says that at any point in time, if the home doesn't appraise for the value of the contract, that the seller can, or excuse me, the buyer can just walk away, even one day before closing, even after the earnest money period has um, passed. And so sellers don't want to deal with that. And then the, the inspections are a little bit more thorough for an FHA loan. So like, for instance, um, there's certain things that like have to be fixed with an FHA loan. Like uh, sometimes it's stupid dump stuff, but like all stairs need railings. You know, maybe that's like a... Um, architectural thing where somebody thinks it looks nice to have a home without um, railings. So there's stuff like that has to be fixed. There's stuff to do with bars on windows. There's stuff to do with outlets. There's stuff that like has to be fixed per FHA guidelines. So sometimes sellers don't want to deal with that at all. So they may steer away from the FHA loan. Um, and sometimes they may take slightly longer to close just based on um, sometimes lenders have to do a little bit more thorough um, underwriting for the FHA loan process. Like when I was at a lender, um, the our conventional loans, we could do those in like 14 days. The FHA loans took 45 to 60 days because we had to go through like two underwriting processes because there was like an FHA audit going on and all this stuff. But like lenders don't like to mess with FHA loans. All things equal, lenders want to do a conventional loan um, as well. So 
that's it. I think about the 10 minute mark. I hope at the 10 minute mark, but I uh, appreciate you watching this all the way till the end. So I think that helps with the, um, what do you call it? Statistics analytics, something like that. So, um, yeah, thank you. And if you want to see another video, let me know. Um, thanks. Till we meet again.